but it's good to see everyone. We we will have a couple of uh, surprise guests. One is probably not a surprise, but the other one is. And we'll do our best to bring them on um, shortly, probably within the next within the next 30 minutes, but definitely within the next 15 minutes or so. So we're looking forward to having them. Today, we are going to be talking about what to do when the words just won't come out. What to do when the words just won't come out. So when this happens, and it's happened probably to all of us, uh, some of the experiences for you may be that you just can't seem to get enough air. You know what you want to say, but you can't seem to get enough air. This could happen at the beginning of whatever it is that you're about to say, or it could happen while you're speaking, right? You could just all of a sudden see a word coming and get stuck, lose your air, your air just totally cuts off. And when this happens, you can start to be, to feel more anxious because now you're wondering, well, how am I going to say what I need to say? Especially if it's something like a phone number or your name, right? Or an address or something like that, or a very, very important word that you need to use in your business or in whatever it is that you're doing. So when this happens, one can become quite anxious because they're anticipating, hey, I need to say this and it's not coming. It's not coming. Uh, you may also start to feel like, I hope I don't embarrass myself not being able to say this or hope I don't make faces because I need to push this word out, which can feel very embarrassing. And you can get to the place where you actually start to beat yourself up about it and not feel real good about yourself. Okay. So today, as promised, we're going to look at uh, four steps. I'm actually going to give you some steps, four steps that you can use, and these are tactical in nature, four steps that you can use when this happens, okay? Before I give you those four, we need to discuss something else that's very important, and that is why chasing tips and tricks, even techniques, uh, may not be the best long-term solution for you. So even though I'm going to give you some techniques, some tips, some tactics, right? But if you just continue to chase after and to just use tips and tricks and techniques, that may not be the best long-term solution for you. Okay, They're important, but we need to understand why it might not be the best solution long-term. So we're going to talk about that. And then, of course, we'll tell you what the best long-term solution is, and then we'll go right into those ways of getting started. And that's more than likely where I'm going to bring on my guests to actually share some of the things that they do that they have done when they get stuck. Okay. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's talk about why chasing tips and tricks and techniques may not be the best long-term solution for you. And here's the reason. Here's the reason. When you're focused on, when you're focused on tips, or tricks, or even techniques, good techniques, maybe techniques that work often. The problem is that these things don't always work. They don't work 100% of the time, right? So even the very best techniques that I may have, or that someone else has, is probably not going to work 100% of the time. Now, there might be some that do, I don't know if any, but ones that work 100% of the time for the rest of your life, this technique works, you're done. That's probably not going to happen. So then the question becomes, what do you do when the technique doesn't work? So here's what you want to think about. How do you respond? How do you react? How do you recover? Do you beat yourself up about it? Do you start to get discouraged and say, oh, well, this was working. Now it's not what's happening. Oh, I'm sliding back. Oh, I'm becoming a stutterer again or whatever it is, or I'm having this problem again. You start to beat yourself up. Does it take you a long time to recover? Do you beat yourself up about it? Do you think about it? 
Well, more than likely, that's probably what has been happening for many people who might be watching this. So instead of focusing on just using techniques, right? Just using techniques, which can work sometimes, it can work a lot, maybe it can work most of the time, but when it doesn't work, how do you respond? And rather than going through this roller coaster of, oh, it's not working, oh, what's happening? I'm, I'm getting frustrated. This probably isn't going to work, so I'm probably not going to use it. I'll just go ahead and push this out. I'll go ahead and say this the way I usually say it because this isn't going to work anyway. Didn't work the last time. Rather than going through all of that, I want to share with you uh, a better way to go. Okay, a better long-term strategy. And I have a, a whole video that I did on this. Some of you have already seen it. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and send that to you after the webinar. But a better way to go about this is to do this. And this is this is what Pro90D does, and you'll hear me talk about this. So rather than chasing after, I'm just going to say techniques, a better strategy is to create a confident mindset and a confident speaking identity. Now, some of you have heard me talk about this before, and you'll hear me continue to talk about it, and probably even more and more. So. This is a better long-term solution. You create a confident mindset. That, that means when you create a confident mindset, you are changing, you're transforming your attitude, your beliefs in a sense, how you see things, specifically how you see your ability to change, how you see yourself in a sense as a speaker right? How you see speaking situations. You're creating a confident mindset, right? Rather than a stuttering mindset or a fear-based mindset or a doubt, doubting mindset, you're creating a confident mindset. You're, you're literally changing your attitude about your ability to improve, about your speech and about your ability to perform well in any speaking situation, regardless of whether or not you have a disfluency, you're changing your mindset about how you are able to perform. The next thing you're doing is you're changing your speaking identity. While these are related, they're not exactly the same. When you change your speaking identity, and this is the big one, you're changing how you identify yourself, who you identify yourself to be. Remember, identity is, and it comes from these words, the same and the same again and again. What that means is that we make up or we see ourselves as people who tend to do certain kinds of things. Well, I tend to get nervous in these speaking situations. I tend to get stuck on these words or these letters. I tend to get stuck when I'm introducing myself. That's your identity, right? The same and the same again and again. When we do the same things, over and over again and again, we start to identify ourselves as being that kind of a person that does these things over and over and over. Does that make sense? This applies to every area of our life, not just our speech. So one thing that we must do is develop a confident speaking identity, right? Where we see ourselves as performing well again and again in any given speaking situation. And if we get stuck, we handle it smoothly and calmly. So we change our speaking identity to a confident speaking identity. So that's the first one. This is critical, and we'll tell you why this is so important as a long-term solution. The second one is create a smooth, clear speaking style, right? So. The second <clears throat> long-term strategy is for you to create a smooth, clear speaking style. I left out the word calm because that's going to be included in uh, smooth. I and mean, some people think of calm. Some, they think it's boring. They think it's 
it's too slow, there's no energy. That's not true, right? So we could include calm here, but I'm not today because it's going to be included in here. Uh, so, so what you want to do is create a smooth, clear speaking style. So this is where the physiological or the physical aspect of speech comes in. So Pro90D addresses both the psychological, your mindset, right, your identity, and it addresses the physiological, how you actually speak, breathing, articulation, all these things. We call them proactive speaking skills. So you have to create a smoother style of speaking so that when you speak, people want to listen, right? When you speak, people are paying attention. You're impacting, you're engaging people. Speaking feels good to you when you're speaking smoothly as opposed to choppy, starting and stopping. And you want it to be clear, clear stylistically. What do I mean by that? What I mean is when you're speaking clearly stylistically, you're articulating, you're not speaking too loud, you're not speaking too low, you're not speaking too fast, where people can't understand you. Clarity is key, right? So you want to speak clearly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but clearly, even if you have an accent and you're speaking um, in another language, it's not your mother tongue. You can retain your accent. I work with lots of people who have accents. And I say, you don't have to change your accent. You don't have to get rid of it or eliminate it. You just need to communicate clearly in this other language, right? Clarity is key. So you want to speak clearly stylistically, and you want to speak clearly structurally. So you want people to follow what you're saying. You don't want them to be confused, right? So creating a smooth, clear speaking style. These are much better longer term solutions than techniques and uh, tips and tricks and so forth. Why? Because here's why. When you have a disfluency and you will, why? Because everyone does. Every person on planet earth has had and will have disfluencies from time to time. Many of them may not notice it. It may not bother them, right? But for people who struggle with their speech, you may notice it. You may be more aware of it than the next person, but they have them too. So everyone's going to have them from time to time. And it just depends on how you respond to it and how quickly and easily and smoothly you recover from it. And it's much easier to recover and you can recover much quicker if you have a confident mindset and speaking identity. You'll recover much quickly. You won't sit and dwell on it. You won't, you'll barely feel embarrassed. You might not even notice it, okay? Because you've changed your mindset and your speaking identity. So you are going to have disfluencies, especially if you're starting this journey. You're going to have lots of disfluencies until you don't, right? As you work through this process. So for those of you who are, who've started coaching with me and you're watching, so those who've started the self study, and you're out there and you say, okay, I'm starting this program and you have a lot of hope and you're doing the exercises and stuff and you're still getting stuck. It's a process. You're literally changing your brain. You're changing your mindset, the way you think. You're changing your identity and you're changing the way you speak. This takes some time and it takes consistency and repetition, right? So when you are creating this new mindset, you understand, hey, I'm going to have some disfluencies more now than later, and it's okay. It's a part of the process. I'm just going to focus on my successes, right? So the mindset and speaking identity is absolutely critical for recovery and for momentum so that you can generate traction and build momentum as opposed to sliding back, giving up, getting frustrated. Oh, this isn't working. I'm, I tried this and I tried that. No. That's going to happen. You got to build that traction. Confident mindset and speaking identity will help you do that. Creating a smooth, clear speaking style. For some of you, you may speak too fast. You may chop your words off. You may not articulate well. You may not inflect well, right? You may need to recalibrate your breathing. All these things you can do. They're skills that you can learn. So when you do these two things, these are much better longer term solutions than just looking for tricks to say this word, to say that letter. Oh, Michael, I can't say this letter. Can you give me a tip on this? Well, I can't say that. <clears throat> for some people, I'd say for all of my clients, they initially may come in looking 
for techniques and we use techniques. But what often happens is the very thing that they've been focusing and they've been struggling with, be it saying their, saying their name or saying this word or that, that word, that often just disappears and takes care of itself as they change their speaking identity and their mindset. As they train themselves to speak smoother, the disfluency just takes care of itself. If you focus on it and you think about it and you try to apply this technique, and sometimes it just it keeps it there. It makes it worse or it makes it only a little bit better. When you change your mindset and your speaking identity and you change the way that you speak, these things, those letters and those words and those speaking situations begin to take care of themselves. Does this make sense? So the, the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to chase just techniques. What's a better long-term alternative? It is to get yourself into a process, right? Get on the smooth speech journey where you are creating a confident mindset and speaking identity, and you're creating a smooth, clear style of speaking. That's the better alternative. So what I want to do now is let's just hear a couple of examples uh, real life examples. We're going to first go to Sakshi. I'm going to try to bring her on. And then we're going to go to Dr. Vinya. Uh, I don't know if she has her video available or not, but we'll check in. Hopefully we can get her on via audio at least. So we're going to go to Sakshi. And Sakshi is going to take a few minutes and just share with you some of the tactics or techniques that she has used to help her when those words just don't come out when she's stuck. And then we're going to do the same thing for Dr. Venus. So I want you guys just to take a few minutes and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and I'm going to walk you through the four steps that you can take. Okay. So let's try to make this happen. Get in here. We're going to find Sakshi first. So give me just a minute or two folks. All right, Sakshi, I'm going to try to bring you on here. Let's see here. Yes. Allow webcam and audio. I can see me and hear me. Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you so much uh, for letting me join today. And hello, uh, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so um, when I get stuck, I always uh, tell myself to just relax, calm down, and take a few moments to breathe and start very slowly. Um, sometimes I also tell myself to do the seven, 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 like just breathe in for a while, hold the breath and breathe out. And that's how I ask myself to calm down before I begin speaking. And yeah, it's mostly starting slow that really helps me overcome the point where I feel that, oh, I'm getting stuck or I'm not able to get this word out. So I think these are the few things that I do um, to just begin slowly and not get worried. about. And even if I do feel like I'm getting stuck, I just pause and, and I just go back and start again. Okay, very good. So you you pause, breathe, sometimes you you go back. In the past, have you ever just wanted to just when you got stuck, it's it's like all of a sudden you started becoming real anxious and you just pushed your way through the word or what kinds of things would you do? What kinds of things did you used to do when you got stuck? I used to just like uh, force myself to speak even though I felt uncomfortable and after I spoke I used to feel really shitty like why did I not like you know um, just pause or just like relax for a while or just take my time I think this is one of the things that you always mention about taking your time so I think uh, I used to never take my time and just force myself to speak whatever used to come out of my mouth, even if, even if it was very choppy. And uh, yeah, I used to feel really bad after that. Things that I share, but I wanted you to share them first because I wanted people to know. And 
you and I didn't rehearse this. I actually asked you to, to send me some of the things that you do without me telling you. And so these are very practical, tactical things that you actually have done and maybe you still do when you get stuck. Um, and so they really work, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, um, I think the first part you mentioned about having a strong speaking uh, uh, identity, I mean, that is very powerful uh, because that acts as a base to everything else. Whatever techniques I'm using, like pausing and like breathing, and these are all just like skills that you can use on top of having a very strong foundation of believing in yourself that you will be able to speak smoothly. Yeah, that is very important. I love the way that you articulated that, that the, the speaking identity and the mindset, they are your foundation. And if you don't have this foundation, then the techniques may work. They may not work. When you do get stuck and you will, then you beat yourself up and you start sliding back. I really love that visual of this being a strong foundation. That, cause that's exactly what it is. Awesome. Hang in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try to bring Dr. Vinya on so that she can answer the same question. Um, so just be available if people have some questions. If you guys, though, can hold the questions, we don't want a lot of conversations going on while we are presenting because it can be a little distracting. But Sakshi will be available um, for as long as she can be. <laughs> Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you. All right. OK, Dr. Vinya, we're going to try to get you on here. Let's see. All right. So I've invited you. Uh, go ahead and try to accept that, and we'll bring you on to answer the same question for us. So this is our first time having Dr. Vinya on. Um, so we'll do our best to get her on. Dr. Vinya uh, works in India. She's a dermatologist. She has her own business. She has just been accepted into the Pro90D Coaches certification training, and uh, she will basically be opening, in a sense, her own franchise in India, and so you'll be hearing more and more about that, so she's going to be going through tr through training. Um, Sakshi's already done the training, and Sakshi's probably going to be um, coming back to work with us in the future, in the very near future as well, so that's why you've been seeing more and more of her. So welcome, Dr. Vinya. Go ahead and just share with us Am I audible what are some things that you do or that you have done when you get stuck, when the words just won't come out. I, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So basically how I manage uh, high pressure in situations is uh, basically just by relaxed. I think that for me is the main thing. So it doesn't happen overnight. Being relaxed is like a lifestyle change which you need to do. So I did it by doing affirmations. For me, that worked huge, you know. So I did affirmations. The first thing I used to do as soon as I wake up is just speak to myself, affirming that I'm a good speaker, I'm a very inspirational speaker and things like that. And that actually helped a lot. So being relaxed, not only in speech, but even, even during other challenges in your day-to-day -day life, you know, just being relaxed, just being uh, allowing yourself to just being calm throughout the day is extremely crucial. And to do that, I think uh, you also need to eat right and sleep right. I know it might sound silly, but eating right and sleeping right are extremely important for you to stay relaxed, especially your sleep. So I worked on that too. And um, ultimately, when you're relaxed, you can also be proactive, you know. And uh, uh, once you're proactive and proactive, means that you know you just need to trigger one or two things of what michael says the pro 90d so for me extending my first few words and using my hands and smiling which i never used to do all along so smiling using my hands 
and speaking the first few words, expanding my first few words, that actually helps. So uh, yeah, this is how I manage because earlier, whenever I used to be asked to speak, oh my God, my heart used to palpitate and I used to sweat. I used to make a fool of myself with my uh, face being all, um, you know, really bad. I used, I was extremely bad. But now, even right now, I was super anxious when actually Michael invited me to speak. Oh, you know, I was like, oh, my God. But I was like, I'm going to act super relaxed. I'm going to smile and I'm going to use my hands. And uh, here I am. I mean, it's it's really happening. So I used uh, I used all these techniques and I'm sure I think being relaxed is the main. It's 80 percent for me. So I work on that every day, every day. I make sure I'm relaxed, not only in my speech, even when I'm talking to my staff, when I'm talking to my kids, I hardly ever do get angry or frustrated. Now, earlier, I was a nervous wreck. I would scream at everyone possible. But right now, I'm so calm. So it has changed my entire life. Pro 90D has changed my entire identity. It's, it's, really, it's really an amazing thing. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Dr. Vinya. So uh, just hang in there for just a minute or two, just in case I have a couple of questions for you or comments that you can respond to. Uh, relaxing. Relaxing is key. And slowing down, right? And just picking a couple of proactive speaking skills. So for those of you that are not aware of that, we're talking about proactive speaking skills. Those are the skills that you can actually learn and develop in the Pro 90 d Smooth Speech system. So if, if you're wondering, well, how do I get to the place where Sakshi is and where Dr. Vinya is? Well, I'm sure for years they watched YouTube videos and they watched webinars, but at some point they decided, you know what, I'm going to engage in a, a system. And so they bought the course. And then at some point they said, I need to go to the next level. And they've both done coaching. Why? You get the accountability and consistency and the community and the feedback. So if you really want to take your speech to the next level long term, most of the people that I see do it in the shortest period of time do it because they've probably gotten into the course. And then at some point they've probably done the coaching. So you're going to hear and you've heard Dr. Vinya talk about some very, very specific strategies. One of the things that she said is about becoming a more relaxed person, developing as a, a lifestyle. And this happened over a period of time. So Dr. Vinya, I think, I think you've already shared what you used to do prior to this. If you had just to give uh, the people who are listening and watching just one small, short piece of advice, what would you tell them? So, they're there, they're getting stuck, they're looking for something to help them get those words out. If you could think of one thing to tell them to do, what do you think it would be? Yeah, I think I would ask them to just relax, pause and smile, and then say just one or two words in an expanded way. It can be anything. It can be just like, hello, or just like a good evening or anything. It needn't be just that one specific word. Like even for this webinar, I had actually prepared a speech on what I'm going to say, but I never spoke anything of that because I just internalized it and I said, okay, this is what I want to say. How I'm going to say, I will think about that while I'm speaking. So this is what I did, you know? And I think just by pausing, smiling, I've introduced a smile while I'm talking and it genuinely is a smile that I'm enjoying speaking. So that smile is also important because it makes the audience relax. I can see I can see Michael smiling. So, you know, it's just like when I'm smiling, I can see the audience relax too. So smile is important. Pausing is important. And just enjoy speaking. Just enjoy it. I can't hear you, Michael. can't hear me because <laughs> I had my mic off. Um, so 
Thank you, Dr. Vinya. I'm just going to repeat everything I said. And uh, you're going to hear us talk about some of those same things that Dr. Vinya and Sakshi mentioned. And we're going to walk through those things right now. Thank you so much. That was extremely valuable. Um, Thank you, Michael. Sure. You're very, very welcome. Good. All right. Let's jump right into it. We're going to talk about four very specific things that we, four very specific steps, actually, that you can take um, to basically smooth out your speech to help you say the things that you want to say, especially under pressure. Okay. So hope that everyone can hear me now. I think you can because I just had my mic off. But let's walk through these four things rather quickly. Number one, these are all pretty much start with S's. Okay. Self or situational awareness. Okay. Now I want you just to follow these here because they'll make sense. The first step is that you must become more self-aware and situationally aware. Here's what I mean, and here's how you do it. If you've established this pattern of getting stuck in certain speaking situations, pushing out words, not being able to say, so you have this pattern of speaking, maybe this disfluent way of speaking and even a way of thinking, the first step is for you to become aware of what you're doing and when you're doing. Okay. So when you're creating new habits, one of the first steps is to become aware of your current habits. It's really hard to change a habit. I'm sure it's possible. It's really hard to change a habit if you're not aware, especially if you're replacing it, right? If you're not aware of what you're actually doing, what the triggers are, what's causing it. So this is it's not something that's very deep. You just simply... As you go through your day and as you converse, you start to become more aware, oh, I'm starting to feel this way. Oh, I'm starting to think this. I'm starting to anticipate. Oh, I'm starting to say this to myself. Oh, my breathing is getting short. Oh, I'm starting off really fast. I'm speaking too fast. I'm rushing. I feel rushed, right? So you start to become more self-aware and or situationally aware. When does this happen? Oh, this happens when I pick up the phone, when I have to say my name, when I'm in front of people in authority, when I'm on a video call. Become more self-aware. That's it. Just become aware. Observe yourself. Observe what you're thinking, how you're feeling. Observe what you're doing. Observe where you're at. Okay? So this is the first step, believe it or not. The second step you've heard us talk about in almost every webinar is self-talk, okay? The second one is self-talk. So now that you're aware, a lot of this comes down to what you're thinking, how you're feeling, how you're responding, what you're saying. So the second step, step, step is to talk to yourself, right? Self-talk and talking to yourself internally, that is, is a habit and it's a skill. It's something that you can develop. We all do it. The problem is we all may not be aware that we're doing it. We may not be aware of the content of our self-talk, of our thoughts. Okay. So you're going to have some situations where you either consciously tell yourself or subconsciously tell yourself. These are your beliefs. Okay, part of your identity, where you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to get stuck. Oh, I'm going to have a problem here. Oh, I hope I don't get stuck. Or I want to avoid having a problem here, right? So, um, yeah, okay, great. So when this happens, when this happens, this is your self-talk. This is your self-talk, all right? And it's very, very important that you're aware of this that you're aware of what you're saying to yourself, what you're thinking, whether or not you're saying it consciously or subconsciously. Right? You have to become aware of it, and then you have to control, direct your train of thinking, direct your self-talk. So now you're probably wondering, well, what are some things I can say to myself? Well, 
you heard Dr. Vindya and Sakshi say some of the things. He said, just relax, just relax, slow down, take your time. So we're going to get into those in number three. But the step here is to develop the habit of talking to yourself because some of you just allow your thoughts to take over and take you wherever they want. Call this trains of thinking. We get on these trains and they go wherever they want to go. They're not going in the direction that you want to go, right? So you have to take control of that train. You might have to get off of that train and hop on to another one. Get off that train if it's taking you in a direction you don't want to go and get on another train. That means you're controlling your train of thinking. This is so important. I can't emphasize it enough. In fact, one of the things that I say to my coaching clients, and I say this in the self-study, is if you don't develop this habit of self-talk, nothing else really works. Nothing else really works because if you can't control what you're thinking and what you say to yourself in the moment when you actually get stuck, if you can't control what you're thinking and what you say, you're done. You're done, right? You have to be able to tell yourself, do this, do that, slow down, relax. And that becomes a habit so that when you're speaking and the words just won't come out, you've now developed a habit of saying, okay, just relax. So even if you're right on the phone, even if someone's standing right in front of you, boom, okay, just relax. Take a breath, go back, do this, right? You can do that in the moment, but it starts, starts with that, then it moves to self-talk. Okay, so now you're saying, well, Michael, what are some of the things that we can actually say to ourselves? Well, I've already mentioned some. Let's go into some very specifics. So say this. These are just some examples. Right? These are some examples. Relax, believe it or not. Slow down. Take a breath. You can also say this is this is kind of negative, but this does help some people. You don't have to rush, okay? You don't have to rush. So these are some examples, very specific examples that my clients say to themselves. Just relax. Uh, there's another one that I didn't put on here. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. Relax. Just relax. Relax. Calm down. Slow down. Take your time. For some people's help for if they say, you don't have to rush. You don't have to rush. You can take your time and say what you want to say. That's in the seven steps. You don't have to rush. You can take your time and say what you want to say. You can say that. Take a second, right? Uh, breathe. Take a breath. Breathe. 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 Breathe, right? So these are some very specific things. Now, there are some other things that you can say, some things you may come up with yourself, some things a community can share with you. That's why being a part of the Pro 90D community is so important. When you enroll in the self-study, you become a part of a very powerful, forward-moving community. It's not a community where people are just in there complaining about stuttering, uh, where they're in there you know, complaining about their speech. And again, not everyone in here stutters, but complaining about their speech and just looking for tips and tips, tips and tips, tips and techniques, right? People are really trying to make long-term changes, really trying to become excellent speakers amazing speakers, exciting speakers, awesome speakers, right? That's what our goal is. And you will pick up on some of these things. So some of the people in the community will say, hey, this is what I say to myself. This is what I do, right? So say this. These are some very specific things that you say. This is tactical now. So you, you understand you have to be able to talk to yourself. So what you can do is just during your entire day, Become aware of what you're thinking, what you're saying to yourself, right? And start actually talking to yourself. Oh, hey, listen, don't, don't think that. Think this instead. You're, an ex you're becoming an excellent speaker. You're actually doing really well. Talk to yourself. When you're in the moment, say these things. You can say these things. The fourth one is something that we've shared before. 
it is to speak proactively, right? You heard both Dr. Vinya and Sakshi say this, speak proactively. So you're probably wondering, what is proactive speech? I can't go into it, but I will mention some of the things because it's in the course and it's a part of the coaching. When you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, one of the things it does is it cuts years off your development time because I can look at you, I can listen to you, and very, very quickly I can say, focus on these one or two things. This is what's going to give you the 80% of your results. It's going to get you most of the way there. If you focus on these couple of things, and then we may later say, okay, now we need to shift and focus to this, right? So that's the evaluation and feedback. You and I don't know what we don't know. We just don't know. We need someone else often to tell us, here's what you need to focus on to save your time. In the course, you'll learn these proactive speaking skills, which may include, I'm just going to run through some of them now, extending your words, expanding your words. Some people might call it stretching, elongating. I don't really like those words. I may use stretch. But extending your words, finishing your words, articulating, inflecting, body language, right? Your posture, your body language can help a lot. Dr. Vinya said, when I use my hands and I extend my first few words, boom, those are the triggers that gets her into that smooth speaking mode. And then the more she does it, the more it becomes the way that she speaks, right? Sakshi gave you a couple of things that she does now. And I remember when she first appeared on the webinar with me and a couple of months ago, she was a little nervous, as we all are sometimes when we have to do things. She spoke a little fast. It wasn't bad or anything. Spoke a little fast. The next time she came back, she took totally smooth, totally smooth. Whether she felt anxious or not, you and I would never know. Dr. Vinya said, yeah, I felt anxious. And I did these things. And one of the things she said, I acted like I was relaxed. It's a part of the pro naivety speech system. We tell you. Act as if you're relaxed. Well, how would you act if you were relaxed? Let me give you the specific steps. Some of them are right in here. Speak proactively. I'm smiling. It's a part of our ultimate presentation system, which is a part of the whole pro naivety speech system. All these things are right there. All of the tools are in the program. And if you want to implement them, then you need a systematic approach. And so that's what the program is. If you need accountability and consistency and encouragement and feedback, you want to come into our community. Uh, you can come into the community at a certain level when you buy the course, but some of us need greater accountability, and that's where the one-on-one -on -one coaching comes in. So let's walk through <coughs> these four very specific steps. These are tactical. Some of you might be looking for, well, uh, what about this or what about that? Well, I'm going to actually add a couple of things to this in just a minute, but become self-aware. If you skip over these, then you're right back to just techniques. Uh, okay, I use this tech. Oh, that didn't work. I use it. You got to become aware. What's going on? What am I thinking? Where does this happen? Self-talk. What am I saying to myself? Am I saying anything to myself or am I just reacting and responding? What are some very specific things that I can say so I'm in the situation I tell myself, right, like Sakshi and Dr. Vinya, okay, relax, slow down, extend your words, whatever it breathe. All right, speak proactively. So as an example, as an example, airflow linking, a proactive speaking skill, or emphasizing. Let's just take those two, airflow linking, emphasizing. Sakshi mentioned this. So she stop, and rather than pushing out the work, right, stop, go back. And blend the words together. Go back and say it again, but blend the words or link the words together. Airflow linking, right? So that's one proactive speak skill, emphasizing a word, which may mean linking. It may mean slightly over-articulating. It might mean <clears throat> using your face and your hands, reflecting, right? could mean all of those things, but you emphasize. So sometimes putting a little emphasis on the difficult word can help you Get that word out, not pushing it out, but emphasizing it. It also makes it sound good. Many of my clients, so when I extend the word, 
it comes out smooth. Or I extend the word before it, or I link the words together, or I inflect on the word. It creates a momentum when I maintain airflow. <clears throat> Speak proactively. Okay? All right. So these are four steps. So let's talk now about how you can really implement these. Just want to here's something that I mentioned earlier. Uh, for those of you that already have this, great. For those of you who might be here today or watching this as a replay, you want to get yourself into a scientifically proven system that can help you get to where you want to go. Uh, this is one such system, okay? So you can get started today in this course. Just click the link, go in there. The beauty of this is you also become a member of our community. Now, people can steal content. You can't steal the community, right? It's a very powerful community. They've been meeting every day since COVID. And I mean, I've seen their speech improve dramatically because they've been meeting every single day. So you get everything you need to help you change. Let's go back here. Everything you need, create a confident mindset and speaking identity and a smoother speaking style so that you can stand out when you speak. Become an excellent speaker. People say, oh, the person used to be quiet or they used to kind of struggle. And now they're an amazing speaker. Literally, this happens all the time with my clients. Okay. So you get that there in the self-study. Great place to start if you're not that familiar with Pro90D or if you haven't invested in yourself yet. This is the best place to start. So let's just be honest. Let's just be honest here. If you're tired of being held hostage by your speech, it's like you're trapped in your own mind. You got stuff you want to say. You got stuff you need to say. You're not able to become the person you want to become, say the things you want to say, do the things you want to do because of your speech then you're going to need to make a decision. You're going to need to put yourself on a track that's consistent, that gives you all the tools and addresses these two things, not just one. It's not just affirmation. It's not just visualization. It's not just breathing and speaking and speaking techniques. It's both together. Then this is the way for you to go. So the basic course is a great place for you to start. All right. Now, let's take a look. Others of you uh, may already be in the self-study or you're not in the self-study, but you're familiar with this process with, with Pro 90D Smooth Speech System. You're familiar with it. You know you need accountability. You know you need to be consistent. You want the feedback. You're a professional. You don't want to take years and years to get to where you want to go. So you are going to want to work with me privately. And soon, some of you will be able to work with Sakshi, and soon some of you will be able to work with Dr. Vinya and other coaches that we train. That's the direction we're moving, so we can spread this thing all over the world. We're already all over the world, but now we want to really get people out there. We're able to work with you um, still virtually, but on a more localized level. So right now, you will be working with me and what that does, that gives you that experience that I'm, I am passing this along, but it gives you that experience that you need to get you to where you want to go as quickly as possible. So this accelerates your progress. This accelerates your progress. So for those of you who are ready, go ahead, book an appointment. Here's the thing. Make sure that when you book the appointment that you're in a position where if you wanted to, you're ready to move forward, right? So this isn't just an exploratory session for you to kick the tires, to book a session and say, oh, well, I might do this next year or I might do it in a couple of years or let me see if I can get a free coaching session, right? These are for people who are serious and who are saying, you know what? If this is right for me, I'm ready to do it now, right? But I, I want to talk to Michael first, person to person, one-to-one, -one, right? That's who these sessions are for, okay? So please be mindful of that, but just remember that
that the private coaching is what accelerates the process. Okay, great. Let's see if we have some questions. Uh, I'm going to go and find out if anyone has any questions. One person asked a question earlier, so I want to address that. Someone did respond to that. This is best done through modeling, right? So you were just referring to what we were talking about earlier, these things. Yes, modeling is absolutely one of the best ways to create the confident mindset and speaking identity and to create a smoother speaking style. Now, you can just use the skills, articulating, inflecting, and buying. You can learn the skills without modeling. But modeling is a very, very powerful way. And believe it or not, even as challenging as it is, it's actually a very fast way. People do this all the time. Athletes do it all the time. Musicians, artists, leaders model other people, right? It's something that we do, that we can do naturally. So this isn't, this isn't foreign. This isn't anything new. It's observational learning. We learn by observing other people and by imitating other people. So modeling is one of the best ways. I hope that I answered that question for you. Okay, what else do we have? Any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, get out of that. Yes. Okay, great. Here we go. I'm modeling you currently, but in addition to stammering, I was diagnosed with MTD muscle tension in the vocal area while speaking, which makes my voice constricted and hoarse. It makes me not that as clear as I would like to be. So I wanted to ask if I should continue modeling or add any exercises. Okay, so... I've heard of that before. I'm not a doctor, so I can't give you a diagnosis or anything like that. What I can tell you is anything that you can do to relax your vocal cords. Now, here's something that's helped a lot of my clients. It's helped me. For some people, when they're speaking, they need to raise their voice, right? That kind of gives them the energy that they need, the momentum that they need. For other people, they actually need to lower their voice. When I say voice, I'm talking about volume, okay? Not tone or pitch, but I'm talking about volume. So some people just, they, they speak really loud, right? They speak really loud. And by lowering, by lowering their volume, they actually feel more relaxed. So you notice when I inflect down or I modulate my voice down, I actually feel more relaxed. So I inflect up. And I come back down again. So now we're talking about tone or pitch, right? Not just volume. So, so you may want or need to lower your volume a little bit. One of the problems that I had for many, many years is lowering my volume. People <laughs> wouldn't be able to hear me. So they would say, what? Can you speak up? So I had to raise it just a little bit. I didn't start to scream. I spoke up just a little, just enough so they could hear me better. Now I can stand in front of large groups and I can project my voice much better. But it took a while. So playing with your volume, playing with your pitch or tone, right? Inflecting, modulating your pitch and tone up and down can be very helpful for allowing your vocal cords to relax more. Um, there may, there's probably lots of other things that you can do. But yes, you probably should still continue to model uh, as long as it's not straining or hurting your voice, right? Speak to your doctor about that. You may want to record yourself. You may want to lower your volume a little bit. Play with your intonations, your voice modulation, inflecting up and down, not staying high. Let's see, is there anything else? So just anything that can cause you to feel more relaxed. If speaking for long periods of time hurts your voice, then you may have to reduce the amount of time that you're speaking, which means being more clear when you're speaking, right? So as you work on your speech, as you work on becoming an excellent speaker, you'll find that you actually need to use less words. You don't have to speak as much. Becoming an excellent listener, becoming more clear and precise, you don't have to speak as much, but your words will be very powerful. So what other exercises can you do? Um, I don't know if, you, if you're if you in our program. If you're in our program, we have something called the free flow speaking exercise. 777 seven, seven breathing exercises. So those exercises are in there too, which I believe can be helpful. So I hope I answered your question. All right. Where can I find the community of people you're talking about? All right. You can find the community. If you've 
enrolled in the Proton D Smooth Speech system. Uh, and if you haven't received the link to join our WhatsApp community, then email me and I'll send you that link. Okay. So you have to be uh, a member of the basic course. You have to have gotten the basic course or be in the coaching to be a part of this community. You can't just pay to be a part of the community, at least not yet. In fact, you wouldn't want to do that because they're going to be operating out of the system. And if you're not a part of the system, it's not going to make sense. You're not going to see the progress. So I hope I answered that question. Where is the community? It's in WhatsApp. How do you join it? You have to enroll in the course or and or be a part of the coaching. Okay. What should I do? What should I do to practice these four steps? Great. Glad you asked. Every time you speak, starting now, every time you speak, run through those steps, right? I've got to go speak to someone. I need to be aware. I need to be aware. I have to go speak to someone. I need to make sure I'm telling myself to relax, to slow down, to take my time, right? Every time I go speak to someone, I need to be using one or more of the proactive speaking skills. So what do you need to do to practice? Go out and speak and run through those steps. Actually apply those steps every time you speak. So your practice is real life speaking. Now, obviously, the speech system has things that you can do to practice, right? There's modeling practice, there's free flow speaking, and so, but that's not real life. That's So, of course, you can probably do it well by yourself. It doesn't mean you shouldn't practice formally. We call that formal. But you actually have to get out and speak to people. What should you do to practice? Get out, speak to people, and maybe even have a checklist where you're just aware. Okay, boom. Am I aware of what's going on? Am I aware of how I'm speaking? Am I aware of what I'm saying to myself? Okay, that's how. All right. Hey, Michael. Um, Papa, from Pakistan, been working quite hard to self-study. Been modeling for quite a while now that I can speak extremely smoothly in low-pressure situations without reminding myself to model. But in high-pressure situations, I have to consciously model. So should I focus on modeling even in the situations where I can speak extremely well? And sometimes trying to mimic your voice also triggers modeling for me. Is that right? Yes. So for some people, I'll just start at the bottom and work back up. For some people, tweaking their accent just a little bit. I never will tell you you have to change your accent. But like Dr. Ismail, um, he said just by tweaking his accent just a tad, boom, it made him feel like he was modeling. Other people couldn't tell, but it made him feel like he was modeling. So it helped him get into that mode. Now he doesn't have to do that at all because it's automatic. So I say continue to use that modeling style every time you speak until you simply no longer need to. You just won't need to. You'll know it because you'll be speaking smoothly and you won't be thinking about how you're speaking. It'll just be your style. In terms of um, how to implement this unconsciously or automatically in high pressure, you have to put yourself in more and more high pressure speaking situations. So what did I used to do? I used to go and create high-pressure speaking situations and do presentations or speak to people in authority. Literally, I would create them. I would be proactive, go out, create them. Don't wait, create. Don't wait, create. The more proactive you are, the faster this will happen. So you go out, create the situations that are higher pressure for yourself, and you use them as practice. Okay, that's the answer. All right. Um, Annie, I sometimes think in a choppy manner as well as as well as repeat and go over words again and again before speaking out loud. So is this a concern? Sakshi, uh, you have to jump off. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm glad that you were here and we'll talk with you soon. Okay, so let's uh, address this other question. Think in a choppy manner as well as repeat the words over and over. In the speech system, again, if you have it, everything's in there. Virtually everything's in there. Everything that's in there is responding or is a response to a challenge or to a question or to a problem that people have had, both for me personally and from the thousands and thousands of people that I've helped. So one of the things that we have in there is finish your thoughts. 
finish your words. Often some people think in a choppy manner in part because of their speech, but also just because that's the way they think. And they interrupt themselves. They'll st- and then they'll, and, and they're, not, they're not real confident. And so what they do, like I just did. So what they do is they're not confident in what they're about to say, or they think there's a better way to say it. So they literally interrupt themselves and go, and it creates a very choppy speaking style. It also causes their thinking to become a little unclear and fuzzy and choppy in a sense. So what we teach is to finish your thoughts, finish out that thought. Then if you want to change it, change it afterwards. Finish your thought and finish your words. Finish what you're saying. Finish that phrase. Then if you want to change it, do that afterwards. And by training yourself to do that, you're going to find that your thinking gets clearer and your speech gets smoother. That's all in the program. It's all in the program, right? So I hope that that answered your question. All right. Um, thank you, Michael. I was asking that question because I want to interview people from my school. Great, great, Nathaniel. All right. Hello, Michael. While speaking slowly, there's always the fear of forgetting the words that I'm going to say. So how can I fix this? Remember what Dr. Vinya said, that she actually had prepared something but didn't use it. So I'm going to, she knew, she knew what she wanted to say. She had the message there, the idea, she had an intention of what she wanted to say, and she trusted herself to say it. So you may have some points that you need to cover. If you notice, I don't use any notes. I don't have any notes here. And, but I've gone over what I wanted to say, but I don't write out the exact words. I don't think about the exact words. I mean, I think about these words, but what, how I'm going to interpret it, exactly how I'm going to say it. I don't necessarily memorize that. What Dr. Vinny says, she internalizes. So I teach internalization as opposed to memorization. Sure, there's certain things you need to memorize, but mostly it's internalizing the message, the idea. Okay, we talk about this in Vic and Rick as well. So one thing is you don't necessarily want to think about the words that you want to say. What's the message? Yeah, you can rehearse the words, but give yourself the freedom to say it in a variety of different ways. As long as you're clearly communicating the idea, the message, give yourself flexibility and freedom. We've talked about this in other webinars as well. So don't think about the words, because if you're trying to say those exact words, you're actually putting extra pressure on yourself, which can cause you to forget the words because of the pressure. Your brain begins to get cloudy, right? You're unable to think as creatively and freely as you would like. If you trust, this is the message. This is the idea that I want to say. And I'd like to say it this way, but I can say it this way, or I can say it this way, or I can say it this way. And you go over it, and then you will, and then you keep getting out there, practicing, speaking, and those kinds of speaking situations. You'll find you can trust yourself. Nothing wrong with having notes. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have notes. Sometimes you need to. But trust yourself to say what you want to say without needing to use those exact words. Okay. So uh, if don't allow yourself to believe that you have to speak fast so that you don't uh, forget the words, because for the most part, that's not true. And when I say slow down, I'm not talking about speaking super slow the entire time. I'm not speaking super slow, right? I'm speaking dynamically, simply meaning Fast and slow, not dynamically as in I'm the greatest speaker in the world. I'm super dynamic. Dynamically just meaning fast and slow, fast and slow. Speeding up sometimes, slowing down sometimes. When you start, start a little slower. So when you slow your speech down, especially when you get started, you can speed up a little bit and then bring it back down. Okay, so I hope I answered your question. All right, great, very good. So guys, we're going to wrap up four minutes after one. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. You're going to get an email when this is over. It will have a copy of the replay. For those of you who are watching the replay of this, you will have already received that, right? Uh, Just remember, if you're feeling like like you're being held hostage by your speech, we're in an environment now where lots of things are virtual. Almost everything was virtual. Now, as economies are starting to open back up, at least for now, Um, A lot of things are still going to be virtual. So you've got virtual meetings where it's video, voice. uh, And I've heard some people say, hey, it's even harder now 
because all eyes are on you. you. There's sometimes little less that I can do physically. And so I really have to use my voice. So sometimes this has made the situation even a little more difficult or a lot more difficult when you're operating in a virtual environment. So if you're a professional and you've got to operate in a virtual environment, you're doing interviews, you're doing meetings, more so now than before, then you want to accelerate your process, your progress by working with me one-on-one. -on -one. You have to look at this like an investment and not like a cost. This is when you're investing in your speech, which is going to allow you to take your career to higher and higher levels. You've got to do the work. I can't do the work for you. Um, you've got to do the work. And if you're not ready for the coaching, then you want to look at the self-study. At least that gets you into the process, gets you the information and puts you in the community. So it's your choice, but make a choice. Do one of those. Don't just keep watching webinars. Don't just keep watching YouTube. I mean, do that, but also take it a little further if you're tired of being held captive by your own speech. Okay. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you guys the next time. Got a couple, got another question here. Um, what's the difference between the ultimate speaker success system and the basic system? So I'm still working on the ultimate, uh, on the ultimate program. So most of it's done. So what I do is if someone buys the ultimate, I also give them the basic. The ultimate is the latest. It's the most up to date. There's information in there that I actually haven't put into the basic course. It's organized. I think the flow is better. So every time I do a course, I get feedback and some people say, well, this is confusing or how do I do this? And so I build that feedback into the new program. Anything that I learn from working with my clients, I build that into the new program, changing the flow of it, sometimes re-recording some of the videos. So that's the difference. It's focused and it's for professionals as well, right? So there's a heavy focus, I'm not gonna say heavy focus, but there's a focus on helping you communicate in high pressure speaking situations, present, shift your focus from yourself to your audience. It's a heavy focus on that. The basic system is just that, it's a basic system. It gives you all the tools that you need, great place to start. You're wondering, is it worth the money? Well. Of course, I'd say yes, but, right? But that's up to you. Uh, if you get the ultimate, you'll get the basic too. So you're not going to be missing out. If you get the basic, you are going to be missing out because there's stuff in the ultimate that's not in the base. So it's what you can afford, what you want. Okay. Hope that that answered the question. All right, Dr. Vinya, great. Glad you were here. You and I will talk soon. Daniel, for me, I get scared to speak uh, other people in school, and I think people will make fun of my stuttering. So yeah, I'm gonna answer that real quick. Um, yes, so you want to get yourself into a community and or practice with people in, in smaller groups, people around whom you're more comfortable, where you can develop this new speaking style and then build yourself out from there. You also need, uh, a structured process that you know that you're going through, you know it's going to work. If you're just putting together and using this technique and that technique, then you don't really have the foundation, like Sakshi said, you don't have the foundation or confidence to say, oh, I can go out and do this. Once you have that foundation, you can actually see your speech starting to smooth out. It ain't going to be perfect, but you're seeing it start to smooth out. Then you go out and you start creating speaking situations where you're speaking smoother. So this is just something that you have to do, and the, the, the process shows you how to do that. Okay, good. So we'll see you guys the next time. Thank you so much for being here, and we'll talk to you soon.